You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa will patronize tomorrow, Sunday, the opening of the fourth session of the fifth legislative term of the Shura and Representative Councils, which will be held online. Under the patronage and attendance of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Affairs and Youth Affairs, Honorary President of the Royal Endurance and Equestrian Federation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the opening race of the new season of endurance for a distance of 100 kilometers and an 80 kilometer race was held in the Bahrain International Village. On the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad stressed the speed and competition witnessed by the race pretend a strong and open competition between the riders during the upcoming championships, especially His Highness explained that the race is is considered one of the most important races in the season, especially that all stables and jockeys know the potential of horses in a distinctive way and always strive to qualify them for the upcoming championships. His Highness praised the outstanding performance of riders showed in the race stages, stressing his keenness to continue supporting the stables to achieve the development vision of endurance sport. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa expressed his appreciation for the outstanding efforts made by the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, headed by His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and all committees in achieving a positive start by producing the race in the best organizational form, which was reflected in the technical aspect of the race by creating the ideal atmosphere for all participants. Rider of the victorious team, Uthman al Awadi was placed first in the 100-kilometer race, while rider Isa Al-Nizi of the same team came in second, and Sultan Abdul Aziz Al-Ramehi from the al zaim team came in third.
Under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Affairs and Youth Affairs, Honorary President of the Role Equestrian and Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the endurance racing season for 2021-2022 was launched at the Bahrain International Endurance Village yesterday. On this occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser stressed that the great participation witnessed in the 40-kilometer race at the opening of the season affirms the tireless efforts made by the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Racing Federation in creating the appropriate conditions for all local staples. The race witnessed the participation of 145 riders of both genders, as this participation proves the great development witnessed by the sport of endurance due to the support of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the future vision of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, headed by His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser highlighted that the Bahraini endurance sport is moving at a steady pace of development and growth, and that the large participation is an indication of the widespread of the sport in the kingdom and the keenness of stables and riders to make strong presence and participation, which is the main aim. His Highness noted that the indicators affirm that the new season will be more exciting in addition to bringing out a new generation of young people capable of carrying the banner of future Bahraini endurance riders, wishing all participants success. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Zayani, announced today that the official launch of the free trade agreement negotiations between the six countries of the Gulf Cooperation Council and the United Kingdom is underway. The move was announced during a phone call that took place between Zayani and Secretary of State for International Trade and President of the Board of Trade, Anne-Marie Trevelin. In a statement on the occasion, the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism expressed great pleasure to officially announce the official launch of FTA negotiations between GCC countries and the UK, an initiative that both sides have worked tirelessly on realizing since the Kingdom of Bahrain's assumption of the GCC presidency at the beginning of this year. He expressed thanks and gratitude to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa for their continued guidance and support towards this significant economic initiative for without which we would not have been able to reach what we have reached. He said that both sides should collectively embark on a new chapter which will solidify our long-standing trade and investment cooperation and build upon the strong foundations forged over the past centuries. The minister wished the negotiation teams a fruitful and successful negotiation. The Kingdom of Bahrain, Russia and other members of the UN Human Rights Council, the UNHRC, have voted for ending the UNHRC's probe into war crimes in Yemen. In a vote called by Bahrain, the 47-member council rejected a resolution led by the Netherlands to extend the mandate of the independent investigation for two years, which is the first time in the council's 15-year history that a resolution was defeated. During the debate, the permanent representative of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United Nations Office and other international organizations in Geneva, Ambassador Dr. Yusuf Abdel Karim Bouchiri, said that Bahrain the countries of the coalition to support legitimacy in Yemen, in addition to the country concerned with draft resolution AHRC 48L.1, were essential parties in establishing the UN Group for Eminent International and Regional Experts on Yemen, based on the consensual resolution issued by the Human Rights Council in September of 2017. He asserted that based on the resolution, the coalition countries had cooperated fully and transparently with the group of eminent experts, but unfortunately the GEE misused its mandate and overlooked the provisions of the UN Security Council Resolution 2216 describing the Houthi militia leader as the leader of the revolution on the one hand and calling the militia as the de facto authorities on the other, which completely contradicts the Security Council's resolution as it legitimizes the coup in Yemen. He added that the investigating team's reports had contributed significantly to deepening the gap between the Yemeni parties and impeding the return of the legitimate government by confusing international public opinion regarding the Yemeni crisis and considering that crisis had begun with the intervention of the coalition to save the legitimate government. Yemen's Minister of Legal Affairs and Human Rights, Ahmed Oman Arman, stressed that Human Rights Council's refusal to extend the mandate of the International and Regional Expert Group on Yemen was its first positive message to Yemen's regarding their position on the Houthi militia. He also stated that over the past three years, the Houthis considered the UNHRC's vote to extend the mandate of GEE as a green light for them to continue their aggression. He added that they have always warned against bias and unprofessionalism and as GEE falls under the influence of forces that support the Houthis and tried to improve their image and misled international public opinion about the reality of the situation in Yemen. Today's vote to reject the extension of its mandate is considered a victory for the Yemenis in the face of the Iranian project. 
The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain strongly condemns and denounces the Iranian-backed terrorist Houthi militia's launch of two booby-trapped drones towards King Abdullah Airport in Jazan in the brotherly kingdom of Saudi Arabia has resulted in a number of civilian casualties and also resulted in minor material damages in a systematic and deliberate hostile attempt to target civilians, installations and civilian objects. The ministry commends the readiness, vigilance and efficiency of the coalition forces to support legitimacy in Yemen, which were able to intercept and destroy the drones. It also stresses Bahrain's support for Saudi Arabia and all the measures it takes against those who try to undermine its security, stability and the integrity of its territories, citizens and residents. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,167,797 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,127,932 had taken the second, and 350,405 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccine. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 612 with 43 recoveries, 80 registered new cases and no deaths. 21 of the new registered cases were expatriates, 36 were contacts of active cases and 23 were travel related. The ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.